G'day. In this episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the data offline and sync policies of Oracle's mobile cloud service. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle mobile platform team. So the first question I'd like to address in this episode is, in fact, where do we set these sync policies? There are essentially three possible places, two on the client side and one on the server side. Well, one of the first places you can set them is on the client side, where you can define the policies in a configuration file for each mobile platform that is delivered as part of the application itself. Now, we'll go into more detail on this specific file and its format in the episodes that deal with each mobile platform. But simply to say you store the sync policies in the Android Oracle Mobile Cloud config XML file or the iOS OMC plist file or on Windows a file like mcsconfig.json. Now there is a problem with specifying the policies in the configuration files and that is they aren't dynamic. In the sense you can't apply different policies at runtime based on let's say different scenarios or rules that you discover. To solve this, the client side SDK for custom APIs allows you to define the policies programmatically, which overrides anything you specified in the configuration files. And as you'll discover on your mobile platform of choice with the SDK that you're using, it has its own set of classes for doing this. Beyond defining the sync policies on the client side via the SDK, you can also define caching policies via the headers returned from an MCS custom API on the server itself. That is from the server side you're saying, for any mobile application accessing this particular custom API, instead of using the policies set in the client side SDK, these server side policies are in place overruling whatever you might have defined on the client. This would be useful where the server side programmer wants to ensure the client cannot cache sensitive data, for example. Now, as you can guess, for a custom API to set these headers and the sync policies, you do this through the MCS server side SDK in Node, where you set specific headers in the response that the client side data offline sync libraries in the client side SDK will adhere to. Now, a question that arises is what happens, for example, you specify sync policies in all the locations, say at the client config file level, in the mobile app code itself and in the server side, which policy wins out? Simply put, the precedence is the server side policies win, then programmatic policies, then the config files. Great, now we understand where we can set the actual sync policies, let's look at the sync policy options in detail for periodic refresh, fetch, expiration of an eviction, update and collision detection. So starting out, let's start with the fetch sync policy. Now the fetch sync policy basically includes options such as fetch from cache that always fetches data from the local cache regardless if the device is online or offline. Now this would be useful in situations say where your device was capturing telemetry data that it's not going to get from the server. It's responsible for capturing that data that was later to be flushed to the server but would never be reread by your app in its raw form. So the cache is kind of a data dump in this case. Alternatively, the fetch from service option will always go to the remote server for data if online and only the most up-to-date data will do for your application. And of course, if you're offline, it's going to return null. Now you can imagine data from a safety system indicating whether, say, an electric board was live or not. It would be critical to show the most up-to-date value for this or no value at all rather than an old value and potentially incorrect cache value which could jeopardize somebody's health or safety. Some of the more sophisticated fetch options include fetch from service if online. Now this option says if you're online, the app should use data from the remote service in preference as it will be more up to date. But if we're offline, data from the local cache will do. A good example of this is say stock market prices where it would be good to have the most accurate prices if we are online, but if we're offline, well, the last price that we downloaded is good enough because it's indicated of the general stock price value. Now, if speed of access to the data is of essence over the timeliness of the data, the fetch from service on cache miss option will mean that if the data exists from the local cache, it's preferred as this can be accessed quickly. But if the data is not found, a cache miss, so to speak, then a fetch occurs against the remote service instead. Now this option is particularly useful, say, for when the app first starts up and you haven't yet fetched any data. 
another option is the fetch from service on case miss or expiry option which is a mouthful now this pretty much puts the same emphasis on retrieving data from the cache for speed before fetching from the remote service but if the data is not found locally or the data has expired the preference is for accurate data so it is fetched from the remote server yet yeah, what about if the data in the cache is actually good enough and you're happy to use it but on using it you would like to preempt a remote refresh of the data so when you use it again that is the data it's already been updated from the remote server in the background this is where the fetch from cache schedule refresh option comes in it solves this by returning the local cache data if it's found but in the background schedules a remote update of the data in this way the current request doesn't wait for the remote data to be fetched across the network and neither should the next request as we've automatically updated it in the background thanks to the last request so you can imagine say you're building an app to download the latest Wimbledon tennis scores this would be good use of this option now there is a problem with this option is on each fetch of the data from the cache it will cause the app to be very chatty with the server if the data hasn't really expired so finally the fetch with refresh option is much the same but it's much more performant in that if an object is not found in the cache or has expired only then will it schedule a background refresh with the remote server Phew, I bet you'd agree that there's a lot of choice with the fetch policy. But as you can see from the various example apps and scenarios we talked about, there are many different needs and we really wanted to cater for all of them. Let's now move then onto the simpler expiration policies. Now as a reminder, the expiration policy is designed to mark data as stale when it's out of date, but leave it on the local device's case so you can use it when the application is offline because you can't get more up-to-date data from the remote MCF service. Now the expiration options include expire on restart, which marks the objects as stale when the app restarts. And this is a particularly useful option for keeping the amount of objects in the cache low. Conversely, the expire after expiration option in conjunction with expire after parameter defines the lifespan of cached objects in seconds. So you could say after 180 seconds, the data is expired. Finally, the never expire option implies the data has never expired in the cache and you would need to, as a programmer, programmatically evict or delete that data. This leads nicely onto the eviction policy options that deal with deleting the data from the cache rather than making it stale. Now, this only has two options, the evict on expiry at startup option, which as the name suggests, when the app starts and it finds expired cache data, it will be evicted automatically. Alternatively, the manual eviction option does nothing. Rather, you, the programmer, need to evict or delete the data from the cache using the SDK. Now, some of you, not all of you, but some of you will be writing mobile applications that allow users to update the data fetched from the server in the locally cached data, okay? So you can use what's called the update policy and this policy deals with how changes to that data in the local cache are then saved back to the server. It includes two options, update if online. And what this option will do is push any of those updated objects straight to the server if the application device is currently online. And if you're offline, well, it raises an error and you need to handle that. Conversely, and more powerfully, the queue if offline option, this one's actually quite cool, is it's much more forgiving if the device is offline. If the user updates any of those cached objects on the local device, rather than just raising an error because we're offline, what it'll do instead is queue all those updates. And when the re device returns online, it will send one batch sync call with all the updates to MCS, and MCS will do the updates on the mobile client's behalf. A final policy I'd like to consider at the API level is the conflict resolution policy. And this is another policy that deals with when the mobile application allows the user to update data, what actually occurs on the server side. For the conflict resolution policy, it includes the client wins option that says in updating an object on the server, if since we downloaded it, allow the user to update the object and now we're writing it back to the server. If somebody, another mobile user or MCS has updated that object, well, what the client wins option says is that my update of the object on my mobile client will override the server copy. Now, you can probably guess then the opposite of the client wins option is the server wins option. 
So again, where we've got a, downloaded an object, we've allowed the user to update it, and now we're writing it back up to the server, but some other user, or maybe MCS itself, has updated the object. What happens in this case? Well, in this case, rather than my copy, my update over updating the server's copy, in fact, we throw my updated object away, and we get the most recent server's updated object instead. Now, as you can appreciate, we kind of need a halfway house between client wins and server wins, and that's where the preserve conflict option comes into play. Again, exactly the same scenario, we've downloaded an object, we've allowed the user to locally update it, and now we're writing it back up to the server, and we discover some other user has subsequently updated that object. What happens? Well, in this case, what we do is we raise an error on the client and then allow you to programmatically resolve it. Now, you can do anything, but maybe what you'll do is take the server copy of the object, the updated object, and your local object, which is also updated, merge the changes, and then flush that back to the server as an update. So overall, the conflict resolution policies are very powerful because you would cry lots of code for you to write to do this all yourself, but these policies mostly take care of all this work for you. Okay, so now let's move on from just talking about policies that are set at, well, per API level, and then talk about the global level policies. And one policy is called periodic refresh policy. Now what this policy does is it controls a background thread in the client SDK that polls the MCS server for data updates on your behalf to the individual APIs. Now the big advantage of this solution is you don't have to write that polling thread in code, which can be quite difficult. The client SDK will just take care of all of this for you. Now the first option for this is the periodic refresh policy refresh none option, which as you probably can guess just disables that polling or that thread, so actually no work occurs. But alternatively, the next option, now wait for it, the periodic refresh policy refresh expired resources on startup option, whew. Okay, what this does is only when the app starts will expired objects be flushed from the local cache and a request to your remote API will be undertaken to fetch updated objects from MCS. Now there is another option, now get ready, the periodic refresh policy refresh expired resources periodically option, <laughs> which is definitely a mouthful to say, now what this option does, along with the value you give the periodic refresh interval parameter in seconds, will cause the backend thread to ping, well call, MCS every interval, okay, again and again and again, asking if there are any updated objects to refresh the local cache with. So this last option is particularly useful for the same uh, stock prices, right, stock market prices, or weather reports that are regularly updated. Most users don't want to be sitting there on their mobile app pressing the equivalent of F5, oh, it doesn't exist on the mobile app, I mean the refresh button, so you can expire those objects and then periodically download more objects, right, by pressing, pressing, pressing. They just want it to happen automatically, and this is what this option does for you. There you go. That's the deep dive in all the sync policies for the data offline and sync capabilities of Oracle Mobile Cloud Service. A lot of detail there, but a hell of a lot of functionality that will benefit you because you don't have to write that code yourself. Great. I hope you'll join us for the next episode where we're now going to look at what you need to do from the custom API side on MCS to make your custom APIs compatible with the data offline and synchronization API. Thanks for joining me. See you in the next episode soon.